We are witnessing an unprecedented explosion of gnome related content. An absurd amount of games built on the simple premise of, I don't know, a gnome guy having adventures? What is the deal with this? Where did it come from? Where is it going? Why is everybody getting into this? We are going to investigate and we are going to find out. Let's do this. <laughs> Gnomes have shown up now and again in PCGs and paper games, and they've never had a huge presence, but they have just kind of been around. The earliest gnome I can think of comes from Kurt's classic PCG, Malfoy the Mailbox Bot. In one random screen in that game, you're blocked by Shinobi, a vicious gnome who will eat any intruder. Because you see, he's guarding the gnome zone. You see, that game takes place on the planet Zoniad, a complicated planet ruled by Newman from Seinfeld, which is divided into zones. There's Cone Zone, where Cone Robots live, a Box Zone, and so on. Shinobi is vicious, and he'll eat you, even though you're a robot in that game if you try to get past him. And he might just be the first gnome we ever encounter in the PCG universe. The next major appearance of gnomes I'm aware of comes in some paper games by Sketchy Penguin. Ronin Academy of Horon, and Jewel Wandering Gnome, but more on that later. Finally, we get a gnome paper game by Detuned Paper called Gnome Golf, which is a fun paper game in which, basically, you play golf. It's a fun system for golfing on paper, and the gnomes look cool in it. And that brings us up to my first gnome PCG and the beginning of the gnome saga. Now, Gnome wasn't intended to be anything, you monsters. It was started by me for a video I made like five years ago, close to the beginning of this channel called How to Make a Paper Computer Game, which by the way, people have been begging me to remake for basically that entire time. And I probably should do that. But regardless, in this video, the idea was I'm showing you how to make a paper computer game in case you've never made one. And so to do that, I had to make a PCG, but I didn't want to make an actual PCG. It was just a demonstration just to show you. So I made a PCG as generic, as basic <laughs> as I possibly could. And so what just popped into my head, I think it was like on the spot when I'm making this video, was Gnome. I just called this game Gnome The Return. I'll call my game Gnome The Return. In this game, you play as a gnome. I think it was sort of probably inspired by the cartoon series David the Gnome I watched when I was a kid. I wasn't really like consciously thinking about that when I was making this, I don't think. But, you know, the influence is pretty similar. The way the gnomes are drawn with the pointy hat, the troll, and like you have to go save your wife. That was very much like David the Gnome, who's always fighting trolls and, you know, his wife is in danger. He's got to save her. That, that probably is what I was thinking of. In this game, you have to save your wife. You have to go into a cave where the trolls are there's a troll on top of the cave with like a thing he's gonna roll onto you you basically just have to go through a bunch of series of puzzles like from this point on it's sort of just a basic pcg there's a maze screen there's a flight screen it really is just a demonstration of what pcgs are like there's very little that's remarkable or unique about this game so why are we still talking about it now, the next thing that happened in the Gnome Saga is something called Gnome the Sequel. Now, this was made by JPGS, who's now known as Krillin. And this is a game that was never actually finished. Gnome the Sequel was supposed to be a sequel to my game, Gnome, and it was going to bring uh, some original concepts into it. He showed the cover art, and I reported on it in an episode of PCG News. And basically, the only thing we know about this game is that in Gnome the Sequel, it would be about this character called... Zuvac, but he's a human. Okay, so number one, he's like Zuvac, right? Number two, he's a human. Number three, he is the son of the gnome, the main character gnome that you're playing as, who, by the way, does not have a name. I didn't give him a name. This was a generic PCG. As far as I'm aware, Gnome the sequel never came out. It was never released in any format. There was no video about it, no nothing. We only ever saw the cover screen. Maybe at some point, uh, JPGS, you know, maybe he did make it, maybe he has it, maybe he'll show it in a video at some point. I don't know. Hopefully that would be awesome. That brought the second chapter of the Gnome Saga to a close. And for a while, I thought that's all there was gonna be.
is a movie title, so that it just came out like that. Maybe maybe someday there will be a prequel. Prequel just be called no. Oh yeah. Well, anyone out there in the comments, if you want to make a a gnome prequel, <laughs> yeah, well, that'd be that'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> I thought that was the end of the gnome saga. Just one game I'd made for a video, and JPGS's cancelled sequel. I thought that would be the end of it. I was wrong. The gnome story lay dormant for a couple of years, but around this time a new YouTuber joined the PCG community, Epic Worlds PCG. Now, Epic Worlds makes a ton of PCGs, really, just an absurd amount. His games tie together and build on lore from his own homemade trading card game, as well as the lore of paper computer games established by me, Chris, and everyone else. He's constantly making new games and bringing established characters in new directions. So as he explored the various PCG stories, he came upon Gnome, a story which had never been continued. He asked my permission to make a sequel to it. Yeah, absolutely, dude, go for it. I don't have any plans to continue Gnome, and anyways, a side note, all my characters and stories are free for you to use in your own PCGs, the, you folks watching there in the audience. His new game was called Gnome Troll Mountain. Like the original, it was a fairly simple PCG, a series of puzzles and enemies to get past. The story picked up right where the last game had ended, with our still unnamed gnome flying in an airplane as he was at the end of my game. But they're running low on fuel, so they land on an abandoned gnome airstrip on a mountain. Which by the way, that's impressive gnome engineering. How do you build an airstrip on a mountain that looks like this? They discover that trolls, the same enemy species that kidnapped your wife in the first game, have taken over this mountain and imprisoned the gnomes that worked within it, who were part of Gnome Airways, apparently. So you go on a mission to save it. But wait, what happened to the gnome's wife? At the end of my game, we rescued her and the two gnomes fly off on an airplane. But in the first screen of this game, she's nowhere to be found. What happened to her? Well, put a pin in that for a moment. As you go through the wrecked base, you find trolls who will attack you and gnomes who've been locked up. Finally, you make your way outside, beat up one last big troll who is about to eat a gnome, and free some more gnomes who have been chained up nearby. And that's where the game ends. It's a relatively short, simple PCG, but a cool one, bringing the story of the gnomes forward. In fact, Epic Worlds intentionally made his game exactly five pages long as a nod to my original game, which was also five pages, although I wasn't paying attention to the page count when I made it. From that moment on, it became a tradition. Because that game was so cool, I was inspired to add on to this saga once again. I created a new game called Gnome Mythos. Once again, I picked up the story right where Epic had left it. We've just rescued a bunch of gnomes from a hungry troll. I wanted to not only continue the story, but to also explore the lore and, well, mythos of the gnome saga. So it turns out that one of the random gnomes we'd rescued before that we didn't know anything about, he was just a random background gnome, he's blind, but his hat is floating above his head. He seems to have had a vision, implying they should go to a temple deep in the forest. So our gnome and the group of gnomes he rescued go on a journey. But wait, the gnome's wife still isn't here. What's going on with that? Put a pin in that for now. We go into the forest and we find this tree temple, a temple built into a tree. On the inside of it, they encounter a giant spider, defeat it, and climb up the inside of the tree to get a lookout at the top of the tree above the forest. There, waiting, was Zuvak, but he's a human. He's reappearing from JPGS's unreleased PCG, Gnome the Sequel. He's the gnome's son, and so he's also a human, as well as a clown on a stick, because he's a version of Zuvak. But in addition to that, we find out that on his own adventures, he's discovered that he's also part troll. He's also discovered that apparently the gnomes were created for one purpose, to destroy the trolls. But why? That makes no sense. Gnomes are a peaceful people. Why would they do that? So this is shocking information to you as a gnome. But Zuvak, but he's a human, is convinced, and he won't let you destroy all the trolls. So he activated a crystal ball, which sucks you in, bringing you somewhere you'll be trapped 
but also where you can find answers. So yeah, once again, a pretty simple game, but I had fun adding to the gnome lore, bringing back Zuvak, but he's a human, and revealing more about him, as well as, hopefully, creating some intriguing questions that could be asked in future sequels. And also, I stuck to the tradition of five screens, as pretty much every gnome game by anyone would after this point. At this point, Void DevX1 got involved. He decided to throw his hat in the ring and made his own sequel, continuing the story where my last game, Gnome Mythos, had left off. His game, Gnome Trapped, starts after Zuvak, but he's a human, sent the gnome through his crystal ball, trapping him somewhere else. We see all the same gnomes from before, including the floating hat guy, though gnome's wife is still missing. What's up with that? Put a pin in that for now. These gnomes find themselves trapped in a crystal dome. After they escape, they soon meet up with the same giant spider who was in the tree in my last game. Only now, he's been mutated to be gigantic. A troll appears during the battle, so, uh-oh, this is gonna be even worse, but he ends up helping the gnomes fight against the spider. They defeat the spider together, and so surely this is the end of that random spider. So, yeah, I guess we don't have to worry about that uh, anymore at all. Now, at this point, something strange happens. The gnome realizes he forgot something important. His wife! That was the whole point of his adventure to begin with. How could he have forgotten her? But put a pin in that for now. As he tries to make sense of this and escape the weird maze he's in, he's confronted by Zuvak, but he's a human again. This time, the grinning Zuvak, but he's a human, tells him he's not your son at all. He's the son of the troll warlord, and the gnome never had a son. And then he turns into a big monster and attacks you. Our gnome guy manages to get past him, but as they escape, a monster appears and kills the gnome guy with the floating hat. No! R.I.P. Gnome Guy with a Floating Hat. But what would happen next would be a bit of a mystery. There's a bit of a gaping hole in this story. This is the one time in the series of gnome sequels that a game didn't take place right where the last one left off. The next game in the series, Gnome Number 5, was called The Journey Home, and once again, it was Epic World's PCG taking the saga forward. This game just starts with the Gnome King because Yes, it turns out that the gnome guy we've been playing as this whole time has been the king of the gnomes this whole time, and we just didn't know it. But put a pin in that. It starts with the gnome king on a hill. We don't know how he got there after passing out in the last game or what happened to the rest of his gnome buddies. So clearly there's some missing time between the two games. And we still don't know what happened to his wife. But put a pin in that for now. The Gnome King has to grapple with an anti-gnome operation founded by Rorik. Rorik is a guy from my classic PCG, the Evil League of Evilness, where he was a member of the company. But he's now branched off to form his own evil operation. We also see a Zuvak statue, a statue of ordinary Zuvak, not Zuvak, but he's a human. If you touch it, you can summon Zuvak to help you. After getting past Rorik's forces, you find yourself confronted by aliens, which are from Epic's PCG Doomsday. So that was the last major sequel. Epic briefly continued the saga after that with Gnome the Maze, which was a mini adventure in the series, which was just one page long. It was a maze screen and takes place after the events of Gnome the Journey Home. It's not clear how much later this is, but Gnome Air sends the Gnome King on another mission this time to find an ancient map to discover an ancient forgotten gnome army that would be helpful against the trolls. Huh, wonder who this gnome army could be. Put a pin in that. The gnome has to make his way through this series of tunnels, avoiding trolls, Rorik's anti-gnome operation, as well as the company forces and even mechs, and all to discover a secret left behind in the distant past. As of the time of writing, that's as far as the gnome saga has gone. Five games, one unreleased game, and a mini-adventure. But that's not the end of our story. Okay, wait a second. Up till this point, there's been something I've been overlooking. The Gnome Prequels! 
That's right, people haven't just continued the gnome story forward, they've also explored its backstory. So let's take a look at some of those games and see how they've brought the gnome story backwards. Now, in my original gnome game, we'd started with the gnome coming home to find his wife captured by trolls, but that raises the question, where was he coming home from? Epic World's PCG made a game which explores that question. He called it number 0.5, in the Gnome Saga, setting it before the events of the original Gnome game. Now this game starts with an organization called Gnome Air sponsoring you, which according to Epic Worlds is the same organization as Gnome Airways, which ran that airbase in the mountain that we landed on back in number two, Gnome Troll Mountain. Anyway, apparently Gnome Air is sponsoring you to go in search of a missing item called the Golden Hat. According to rumors, it's last been seen on a barren planet, so they send him there. Wait, barren planet? So gnomes are going planet to planet now? They're an interstellar civilization? First airplanes, and now starships? Man, these gnomes are just getting crazier and crazier. And now that I think of it, what planet are these gnomes games even taking place on? Is it on Earth? A different, different planet, planet in a PCG universe? universe? An, an alternate, an alternate universe? universe? Anyway, the golden hat is like a crown. Whoever wears it becomes the gnome king, so it's an immeasurably important artifact. I wonder what would happen if someone who isn't a gnome puts on the golden hat. Would they also become the gnome king? What if a troll puts it on? Would the gnomes respect it and recognize you as king? What if it's a troll, he becomes king, and he immediately orders the gnomes to disband their own defenses and like kill themselves. Would they be obliged to obey? Probably not, but anyway, our gnome hero has to explore this world, getting over many obstacles, and finally he makes his way into a cave. Inside, he meets the same spider from the other gnome games, and this spider is just furious. He wants revenge for the other times you defeated him. Except wait, the other battles ha with the spider happened in the sequels, and this game is a prequel to the first game, so the spider shouldn't want revenge yet, right? Because th that hasn't happened yet unless he's a time-traveling spider who, after being defeated by the gnome multiple times, he travels back through time to, in an attempt to kill the gnome before he could ever defeat the spider. To be clear, that's all speculation. That's not canon. Anyway, if it was a time travel attempt to kill you, it fails miserably because you get past the spider pretty easily, just like the other games. After that, you encounter Rorik, who I mentioned before with his anti-gnome organization. This is the first time the gnome meets him. And side note, I'm pretty sure this game was the first to confirm that the gnome saga takes place in the main PCG universe because of Rorik's appearance here. Rorik ties it back to some of my early PCGs. Once you get past Rorik, you get the golden hat, which makes you into the gnome king. So yeah, this is how you became the gnome king, apparently shortly before the original gnome game. So that's why through all the gnome sequels, he's been the king and we just didn't know it. So yeah, I guess you can uh, take that particular pin out <laughs> at this point. Gnome's search for the golden hat started a trend, not just of prequels, but also of digging deeper into the cracks and crevices of the gnome timeline. Like for example, whatever happened to the gnome's wife? It's time to take that pin out because here's where we find out. Gnome the missing five hours by void dev x1 according to the wiki, because there's no video for this game and it's not up on the PCG shop, so I can't actually show it, unfortunately, takes place after the first gnome game when we rescued the gnome's wife and were in the airplane with her. Suddenly, mysterious energy comes into the plane and strikes the gnome, making him forget his wife was with him and also making him want to rescue other gnomes for some reason. Although I don't know why he wouldn't want to rescue them, you know, regardless, but I guess this beam, you know, thought that was important to add in there. Another gnome who witnessed this massive exchange of energy was driven insane by it. He turned into the gnome dude with the floating cap who we see in the sequels. Okay, so now we know why she was forgotten, but what was the gnome's wife's full story? What was she doing and where did she end up? These questions were finally answered in Gnome the Forgotten by Sketchy Penguin, also known as Magic Paper Productions. Now, unlike most of the other games so far, this is the first game where instead of starring the same gnome guy, it stars the gnome's wife. This takes place during the prequel, Gnome Search for the Golden Hat by Epic Worlds PCG, 
meaning that the gnome dude is away searching for the golden hat while his wife is at home. The game starts with an evil troll named Malek attacking her home and kidnapping her. So this is how she was kidnapped in the original gnome game. So we're now finding out that that the troll guy from the end of the original gnome game who had kidnapped your wife, his name is Malek, and now we're finding out more about him. So after she's kidnapped by Malek, she's taken back to his prison camp where she's locked up, but she meets a guy named Gnorman? Norman? Gnorman? Who appears to be half troll and half gnome. And this is a first for the series, our first hybrid troll gnome. And we find out that Norman is part of a group called the Outcasts, who are a community of both gnomes and trolls that live together in peace and harmony, which is a really cool thing. And it's significant for what, like that, that tells us a lot about the gnomes and the trolls. It show, proves that peace between them is possible. Gnome's wife and Norman escape together. They go to Concord Village, which is a community where the gnomes and trolls live together peacefully. But it turns out that one of the people there is a spy he alerts Malik. Malik recaptures everybody. It's a whole thing. But eventually, she escapes again, only to be caught up again by Malik. And finally, is reunited with her husband at the end of the game, in the same way that we saw happen at the end of the original Gnome game. So it's really cool that we get to see the Gnome's wife's perspective for the first time, but also in this game, we find out her identity for the first time. Sketchy Penguin establishes in this game that the Gnome's wife is none other then Jewel, the wandering gnome. Jewel? Jull? We finally have a name for her. And hey, she's actually got a name before her husband, which is who's the star of most of the games in the gnome franchise. Pretty good, right? But wait, who's Jewel? Well, it turns out Jewel was a gnome created by Sketchy Penguin's sister. And near as I can tell, her first appearance was in the paper game. Not paper computer game, but paper game called Ronin Academy of Horon by Sketchy Penguin. Yes, this game was made before Sketchy had even discovered PCG, so it was part of the paper game franchise movement trend started by IPGS. Since the game was made, Sketchy Penguin has now established that it does take place in the PCG universe. The very same universe that Zuvac and Tutorial Bot and yes, which all the gnome games are in. Ronin Academy of Horon stars a hero called Ronin, living on a remote planet called Pasquana, which is a planet with primitive technology, and he's studying at a fighting academy where he's learning boxing because the game is a fighting game. During the game, Ronin's instructor, Master Nuko, tasks Ronin with finding his daughter, Jewel, who's gone missing. So after a bunch of adventures, Ronin catches up with her and turns out she just got bored at the academy and left to go wandering. She wants to explore and see this incredible world of Pasquana, but Ronan convinces her to come back to the academy. Oh well, so much for her dream of exploring, I guess. Too bad, you gotta learn fighting. So the two of them journey back to the academy, and that was that. After this game, Jewel's story was set to continue in a paper computer game by Sketchy Penguin called Jewel Wandering Gnome. Unfortunately, this game was cancelled. It would have been the first ever game to star Jewel taking place after the Ronin game. Apparently, she left the academy again and is exploring the planet Pasquana again. Awesome. That's right! Explore that planet, Jewel! The game would have featured an original mechanic where you only have exactly three items, a dictionary, an umbrella, and a magnet, and you can use those and only those to solve puzzles, which I think sounds like a fun challenge. Plus, this would have been the only game to connect the Ronin series to the PCG universe, but unfortunately, it wasn't to be. But hey, at least we did later get Gnome the Forgotten, so at least Jewel did get to be the star of one adventure. And who knows, maybe one day this game could see the light of day. In PCGs, anything is possible. So with these new games expanding the lore of the gnome's wife and connecting her to these old paper games by Sketchy Penguin, we've learned a lot more. But the community was about to explore a lot deeper into the lore. The Funky Cat PCG, a newcomer to the PCG community with only a few PCGs under his belt, decided to throw his hat in the ring and create his own gnome game. But this is the first game in the series, as far as I can tell, where you don't play as a gnome at all. 
The game is called Gnome the Trolls. You play as a young troll, that's right. One of the trolls who have been hounding you the entire series. But this troll, whose name we don't know, is different than the others. While everyone around him wants to fight, he just wants to be friends with everyone. He's forced to spar and fight even with his own brother, and when he can't fight, when he can't meet everyone's expectations, he's outcast from society. This is actually legitimately interesting commentary. It's a lot more interesting than I'd expect from a random PCG in the Gnome Saga. I mean, this kind of shows how there can be a lot of pressure on boys to be manly, to show that you're strong and tough, even if that isn't what you want to do. I mean, if it is what you want to do, that's great. I mean, being a strong guy is cool, but for some guys, that's not what they want to be. And society tries to force them to match its expectations. Obviously, it's a lot worse for troll society than it is for ours, but still, this is a really good discussion. And it also shows that enemies like the trolls who we kind of just dismiss as being evil and don't really think about why, this kind of changes our perspective and it's like, wait, these are people too. And maybe they're being bad because they were expected to act that way from a young age. The art is also just really good. Not only does it look good, but it's expressive. The facial expressions on the troll's face really tell the story and you feel it. This is a really good gnome game and it sticks to the gnome tradition of being five pages. So after our troll is outcast, he comes across a magical staff and a wizard explains how much power he's just gained. Realizing the power he holds in his hands, our troll starts to think back on his anger at how the trolls mistreated him over the years and finally outcast him and decides to take his revenge. He uses the staff to create a creature capable of destroying the trolls, a terrible creature known as Yes, this is how the gnomes were created in the first place. This explains Zuvak but he's a human's comment back in my game Gnome Mythos that the gnomes were created to destroy the trolls. Now we know who created them, and it's a heartbreaking story. I feel for him, you know, this poor troll dude living thousands of years before the gnome games we know. All he wanted was to be friendly to everyone, whether they're gnome or troll or whatever else. But he was punished harshly for being who he is, just for being a peaceful person. And because of this, he became genocidal. He went down a dark path. But he also created the gnomes in the process, which might not be such a bad thing after all. Because think about what he created. Are the gnomes really a weapon of mass destruction? According to our gnome in my game, Gnome Mythos, the gnomes are a peaceful people. True, they come into conflict with the trolls, and true, they defeat them a lot, but that's not because they want to kill them all, it's because the trolls are attacking them, kidnapping them like we saw in the original gnome game, and the gnomes are just defending themselves. The reason they win is because they're clever, they keep finding ways to outsmart the trolls. Maybe that's the irony of this ancient troll's creation. He gave the trolls an out. Yes, the gnomes are destroying the trolls, but at any moment, the trolls could just stop attacking them and make peace. But the trolls can't do that because their culture keeps them stuck in this obsession with fighting, with invading, with controlling people who aren't like them. The existence of the gnomes will be their downfall unless they decide to change. And as unthinkable as that may seem, that is possible. So maybe Zuvak, but he's a human, instead of turning against the gnomes who, after he found out he's part troll, maybe instead he should try to find a way to make the peace between the two species, to be the bridge between the two species. Maybe that's what the troll who created the gnomes secretly hoped for when he created them in the first place. But if so, it would take a while to get there. The next game in the Gnome Saga is both a sequel and a prequel, and also a sequel to a prequel. The game is called Gnome The Voice by Epic Worlds PCG once again, and it continues where the last sequel left off. Only our gnome, the Gnome King, has fallen through a portal which goes about 5,000 years back in time. So most of the game takes place not long after the gnomes were created, as we just saw in Gnome Trolls. After falling through the portal, you fall into the middle of a bunch of gnomes who look weirdly vicious. 
These are part of the Gnome Army, a powerful force which existed in this time period. By the way, that's the powerful Gnome Army that you were trying to find in Gnome the Maze. Apparently in this time, the trolls are close to extinction due to these gnomes killing them. So I guess at one point, the gnomes came close to fulfilling the purpose they were created for. So much for finding peace between the two races. But wait, we find out that a mysterious voice is talking to these gnomes, telling them that in the future, trolls are going to wreak havoc with them, so it's better to exterminate them now. It's not clear who this voice is or why it's doing this or where it comes from. They just hear it in their ears. Epic mentions there are multiple possibilities. It could be the Shadow, the head of the company from Chris's PCGs, who are possibly an Umbrian from Exile by Pierre. It is reminiscent of Lily, the Umbrian from my PCG Zuvac the Life and Times of a Clown on a Stick, when she manipulates the company by whispering into the ears of the board members while she's invisible. Who knows? It could even be the outcast troll who created the gnomes, or even someone new that we've never encountered before. Regardless, you witness these gnomes attack and kill a defenseless troll, and you're conflicted. Remember, from your world, you know the trolls as being vicious and attacking you. But on the other hand, it's a defenseless being being attacked. It's a PCG, so you can choose whether to intervene. Soon after, you come across Zuvac, but he's a human again. I guess he time traveled to this era somehow as well. He tells the gnome army to disband because he still has loyalty to his troll heritage. But he's also a gnome and he tells the gnome army to disband and they listen. It's not clear why they would obey this half gnome, half troll, half human, half clown on a stick from the future, but they do. So the army disbands and over time, the troll numbers will repopulate. You witness Zuvac Buddy's a human erase the memories of all the gnomes in this era, though yours aren't erased. So gnomes don't remember that they were ever the aggressors hunting the trolls. He also destroys gnome weapons and artifacts. So although at first glance this game can seem like it's confirming the idea that gnomes are exterminating trolls because they were genetically programmed to do that, because that's what they were created for. Once you get deeper into the game, it kind of questions that assumption. The gnomes weren't just attacking for no reason. They were being controlled by the voice, whoever the voice was. Just like how in Gnome Trolls, we sort of humanize the trolls and find out that they're just people. In this game, we sort of humanize the gnomes too and confirm to ourselves that they're just people too. They may have been created to destroy the trolls, but now they're living people and they can make choices. And the proof is in the PCG. The fact that you, the player, can choose not to kill the defenseless troll and even to save him if you want, proves that the gnomes have a choice. Like any other people, they can be manipulated. Like the trolls, they're capable of cruelty when their culture pushes them into it. But at the end of the day, they are people. The gnome story was spreading fast with people exploring both the past and the future of these characters, but this explosion of gnome content eventually created more interest in the original gnome game and so people began to create their own remakes of my hastily made PCG. Creative Carson made a remake of my original gnome game, Gnome the Return. It's a pretty straightforward screen for screen remake, but the art is a lot neater being drawn in a computer rather than on paper. Epic World's PCG also made his own remake of the original, and this one strayed a bit more from the original game. It still does maintain most of the core gameplay, it's the same game at its core, but it adds a lot. For example, inside the house that you find on the first screen, there's a little guy named Gorgu, who's a new type of gnome-related creature, I guess? Says he's half gnome, but he's basically a gnome head with legs. Interesting. He just completely wasn't there in my original game, but it's certainly a cool addition. Gorgu, as far as he knows, is the last half gnome there is. He wants to find the rest of his species. The game improved on parts of my original game, like the maze screen, which was never intended to be playable. It was only ever a bare minimum demonstration of what a maze screen is to show in that video. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense to flesh that out to make it more playable. It also adds the spider, who at this point has been in like 
150% of the known game. So this establishes that actually the first time we met the spider was really in the very first game after all. So has this all just been a weird fad or is the gnome saga something with staying power that's going to continue into the future? Well, there's no way to know for sure. On the one hand, it's a pretty generic story, right? It's just a gnome fighting trolls like David the gnome. So maybe what's driving all this interest in it is just the novelty of fleshing out a story that was never intended to be a story. Maybe now that everyone's had their kicks, maybe it'll die down and become a footnote in PCG history. On the other hand, just because it started as a generic story doesn't mean it's destined to stay that way. We've already seen its lore get filled out with weird, memorable, interesting characters and creatures like Zuvak Buddy's a human and Gorgu the half gnome, and the floating hat guy, and Jewel the wandering gnome, and the outcast troll who created the gnomes. It's kind of living proof that any story can be extraordinary if you explore it with imagination. So maybe all the lore that's been built up on top of this series' humble beginnings is enough to draw people in, to make them want to add more to this fascinating saga. At the time of writing, there's still a few gnome games in development. Epic Worlds PCG shared this image with me of a new gnome game, which is a prequel that's all about the spider we're only seeing. It's called Gnome the Spider, and it takes place after my game Gnome Mythos and before the rest of the sequels. So hopefully the gnome saga continues, and if you're watching this, please feel free to jump in and create your own gnome games and add to the saga. Give your own unique take on gnome and all these characters because it's fun and why not? And hey, Let's just see how much lore we can build on this game that was never even meant to be played. How far can we get? All right, no more today, folks. Thanks for watching, and peace to you later. Look around you. There are many things to